when, when you're sitting around the house, what do you like to play? Uh, what I try to do is occasionally, let me see if I can find something here. All right. I'll talk to guys like Mark Letary or something like that. You know Mark from uh, oh, yeah. Snarky Puppy. What an amazing player, right? He's fantastic. I go, I go what are you looking at these days? And he'll, he'll, he'll show me something like this. Oh, yeah. Slaminski for, you know. Now, a lot of this stuff's ugly sounding. It doesn't really do much. But what it does do is occasionally – sorry, I'm making a mess here. That's all right. Um, what it does do is trigger an idea or two. Sometimes right, exactly. you'll, you'll, you'll fall on something, you go, oh, wow, and then all of a sudden you'll make it your own. And You know, I don't have any specifics, man. You know, I'm, I, I'm 62 years old. I just try to keep my hands on it every day. I mean, I, I'm not going right. to change the world. I didn't change the world. You know, I'm a – I'm, I'm your journeyman guitar player, man. You know, I'll show up and play whatever you need me to do. You know, I've, I'm just lucky enough to write musician on my tax return since 1975, you know what I mean, since I was a kid. So knock wood on that. You know, there's so many amazing guitar players now, Greg. Now, you know, be at the top of the heap. There's a lot of competition. Now, I'm so glad that I am like 62 and not, you know, 20 trying to make it in the music business right now. That would be tough. Yeah, but just, my son, my you know son. what? As much as there are great guitar players lurking around, compared to your massive library <laughs> of stuff that you've played on, well, I mean, I, just, I mean, yeah, yeah. you you set the bar quite high indeed, and you're st still a frightening player. But the thing that about your playing is like, I'll hear kind of the kind of a jazzier thing, and your approach. Well, no, but you know, that's not the way to just. Not that's not fair to real jazz players, man. I mean, yeah, but that's like Kurt Rosenwinkel or something like that. I mean, these cats, you know, are, are you know Wayne Krantz or you know any of these other guys that are just like. You know, well, I think it's it's you know it's difficult to navigate changes and make it digestible without going. Well, now it's taken too far into the jazz lane, and that is an art form in and of itself, and one well, you that is. mastered. I mean, that's that's like classical guitar. People that play classical guitar don't play like we do. Like their right. they're, they're, they're electric guitar to them is a foreign instrument, right? You know, and and that's a lifelong endeavor. When you're going to be a classical guitar player, you start single digit and you stay. If you're going to be a, pro <laughs> the odds of being a professional classical guitar player, right? Make us like you know, give us gr much greater odds. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, for the different stuff, flamenco is a whole other right. thing. You know what I mean? So each, you know, yeah, we play guitar as a vague uh, terminology. We're I'm a, I'm a rock and roll guitar player. That's how I uh, I have a little bit of uh, uh, knowledge. You know, I studied a little bit of music when I was in you know school. I realized I had to do that. Right. And I'm still trying to learn, man. I think the older I get, the more I hate myself for not digging deeper when I was younger. <laughs> That's really the truth. I should have been I should have been working on my reading when I was ten. I should have been doing this. I should have been doing that, you know. But you know what? In all in all, I knock on the wood on my desk that I've had a, a really wonderful career and I'm very, very grateful for it. There's a million guys better than me. Uh, you being one of them. Ah. And and no, and I'm not trying to tug it man i mean i'm I, listen i'm a humble cat man listen i've had a great career i'm very grateful for it um i i play okay for a for an old guy and uh you know and i can do a lot of different things on the spot absolutely you know I mean? and, and that and that and that is a different job requirement than say just being a genius guitar player like uh, I have to show up and not know what I'm going to do or what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it. That well, let's talk about that a little bit. So how did, sure. when you first started doing sessions, mm -hmm. uh, what was kind of your, I mean, your mindset from both, you know, what might be expected of you plus what kind of gear did you bring? And then how did it kind of morph when you were like doing like at the, at the heyday of doing all the sessions versus right. what, how you would approach it now? You know what I mean? Well, now, I mean, I'll do a session now and then for a friend or something. Sure. Like that. And then it's not about money or nothing. Like, pay me what you want or don't pay me at all or whatever. I don't care. I do stuff because I, I, I either love the person or I love the music or whatever. I generally don't have a lot of time for it because I'm doing my own stuff. And, sure. I'm, trying, and I'm trying to be a father. I have two sets of kids. I got, right. you know, my older kids, which are 35 and 33. And then I have 12 and nine as well. Right. And my nine-year-old is autistic, so he t he takes a little bit more. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, requires a little bit more effort, but he's great. You know, it's just been great for me as a human being 
to test my patience as a human being because autism is a very unique uh, anomaly because no two are the same. Right. So you can't really, and, and it's really funny. He only likes classical music. He hates rock and roll. So if I'm in my office and I'm playing my guitar, so I'm all of a sudden I'll come over and it's the volume's turned off. <laughs> <laughs> He's standing. I go, dude. You see this house that we live in? Yeah, it's because of this. You know. Right. Yeah, exactly. And he'll laugh and run out of the room. You know what I mean? But you know, he, he you know, he's nine. You know, uh, you know. The irony is, it'd be great if you'd become a great classical guitar player. So, like, right. You know, odds are, odds are, I, I don't know what he's gonna be. I don't know. We sit around and talk about this stuff all day long. But uh, my son Trev is the only one that they got bit by the disease of right. of guitarness. The rest of my my oldest daughter is married to a wonderful cat who's in real estate and everything like that. They live a real straight life, perfect. <laughs> my, my son is is great. He's like mini me. He's my best friend, and he plays great. He's a real melodic player. He writes great tunes, and he does that. He's got a record coming out uh, at the end of the year. Um, and my youngest daughter. She's 12, no interest in it whatsoever. And my nine-year-old, we'll see. But at this point, he only listens to classical music. Anything with a backbeat or a loud guitar, he's not interested in. Well, the irony kills me, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so what's up with you? What are you doing with yourself, man? You, I mean, you've been going on the road playing. Well, and then, and then now it's, and, and it's great that you're out there playing and people are showing up and digging what you're doing. I mean, well, yeah, we had we had some momentum going with the uh, the trio with my son and, and then Toby on organ, and then the, the, and band. then COVID hit. So, but what's been fortunate for me is that so much of the stuff I do uh, is online, so I was able yeah. to transition to doing a bunch of stuff at home. So that's been great. Um, yeah, I love the little jam I love the little jams from the from the bedroom or wherever it is that yeah, from my orange room. room. The room the of orange. orange room. You have the orange room, right? I like that. You know, I love the sound of your guitars and amps. I mean, oh well, thank you. You know, we've I'm, been having I'm, fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're getting the attention that you deserve because great players deserve that. You know, I mean, there, there's a lot of cats out there, man. There's a lot of people out there trying to make a name for themselves in this in this business, and now it's all been impossible. My whole year, zero. I mean, I got these. Right. Yeah, I got these things behind me, man. It's my year at a glance. Right? I do love the analog calendar, though. I got to tell you, I love that. You know, I have that, but now it's all erased. All anything that's on there now that says is just not there. It's gone. Right. There's a song that I wrote. It's called "There's No Business," and that's the end of the song. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you hearing from, like the Ringo Camp, and you know? I saw him. I saw him through the glass the other day. I mean, we were showing up, like, you know, I'm working on my record. It was the last song I had to cut on my record. And I wrote, I wrote a real 1965-era song, and he had to play on it. And, and I'm honored and lucky enough to call him a dear friend. And he said he'd do it for me, and we did the, you know, we did the whole thing through. He was in one room. I was in another room. I mean, he's, he's going to be 80 years old and stuff. That's I mean, crazy. I he looks I, great. I, I'm no, I was talking to him on FaceTime the other day and he's running on the treadmill at full blast at 80 years old. I'm going, you know, I ain't worried about you. I'm worried about me. Right. But uh, he said he would do it through the wall for me so I could finish this. And now I'm mixing it over the phone. You know, I have speakers here, but there's a certain point where you have to be in the room. Right. I just have to be in the room and I just do the final tweaks. I'm not going over the top with it all. It was recorded really, really great by my friend Ken Freeman. And um, no overdubs. I mean, I did a few minimal overdubs. I have two songs that I layered and the rest of it's all live. But some of it I had to just put in. You know, there just had to be a bunch of guitars on it. But sure. I can't help myself. But uh, or no, it's just done. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, the band is toast right now. I mean, is anyone saying we're thinking, you know, because, you know, we had a tour planned for the fall. Needless to say, it's not happening. But from your point of view, are people saying, well, we're looking at a year from now where we're yeah. going to be safe again? Or yeah. Well, I'm looking. I'm looking. Okay. And I do underline quotation marks. Right. Looking at um, Australia, New Zealand, in, uh, possibly in April next year. Yeah, possibly. got it. Yep. You know, that's a hope. 
Okay? Right. I'm, I'm crossing everything in my body right now that's <laughs> crossable. Um, because I'm not only because, you know, you know, I, you know, I save money. I don't spend money on myself. I don't do, you know, those days are over. Right. Um, right. I uh, you know, and uh, I just want to work. I want to play. Yeah. I'm not, it's not, I'm not used to not being okay. I'm leaving in a week or I'm in a month. I go and then we're going to be gone for three months. And then it's this and all the way up for two years in advance. I'm, I'm not used to having zero. Right. And, and and I'm no different than you or anyone else out there right now going, if you're a musician right now, it's terrifying. Yeah. Yep. Because even if you have a club gig or something like that, you know, it's nothing, man. And and right. what I'm scared of when it comes back, a lot of these guys are going, well, I don't have any money. Right. You know I, mean? I, I, I can't pay you. I, I You know, right now we're way – it's just scary what could happen to us. Right. You know what I mean? We're like, and like sports is going to go before us. Right. Like they're going to test sports and arenas and stadiums and all this stuff. And if that works, then they'll talk about bringing musicians back. So we're the lowest on the totem pole. Right. Exactly. Which, which, and for us, considering that it's still hundred bucks a night to play in the club. I mean, what the, what the f is that? <laughs> about no cost of living increase. That's a fact. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, guys. Right. And it's like, oh, this will be good for your exposure. I go, right. sell your plumbing job in my house. Right. You come to my house and you redo all my plumbing. I'll tell all my friends. I'll tell everybody. Exactly. You know I mean? it's, except it doesn't work like that. They come over to your house and they see a gold record on the wall. and go, oh, man, can I get some free tickets to your show? I go, yeah, can I get some free plumbing? <laughs> and the conversation changes. <laughs> you know, we had we had a window guy we were talking to about maybe doing, we have this old, this house is old, 1908, and all the windows are old. And so this guy gave us a quote on windows, and we're having this little Zoom meeting with this guy from the window company. And he's like, are you ready for the quote? I'm like, oh. okay, yeah. And so I write down on a piece of paper how much I think it's going to be, and my wife writes down. And it's like, Way more than that. And we we're like, Jesus, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? He's like, hey, listen, with Windows, whatever you think it's going to be, it's going to be double that plus five grand. I was like, fantastic. I just found my new negotiation tool. <laughs> whatever you think it's going to be, double it and add five grand. And I'm I yours. like I like that. I like that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that works. But I don't understand why people don't think musicians have a real job. Right. What other job in the last seven years of my life, I've been away 2,000 days from my home, from my children. 2,000 days. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But that's not a, a commitment. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, here's the thing. I could say no, but who says no to Ringo Starr? Yeah, you don't. No to, you that's know, not an option. No. Who says no to a fucking, like, you know, going on the road and making a bunch of money with my old pop rock band? You know what I mean? Right. Right, right, right. You know, and uh, you know, I, I you can call the music whatever you want. I get to play all kinds of music every night with great players, and I don't oh, care absolutely. if you're not. But you know, I, I I'm just happy to still be alive and doing this. And um, thank you very much for having me on your show to 